Okay, um, so now I'm going to talk about this uh, beautiful theory. It's like uh, um, of describing, if you will, the order conditions for Runge Kuhn method in, in terms of uh, combinatorial constructs um, using what are called rooted trees. Okay, so these are rooted trees uh, and sort of uh, order conditions for Q methods. Um, and, you know, if you didn't know about the history of uh, trees, you might, um, which trees are, of course, uh, acyclic graphs, uh, you might be surprised at the ability of trees to um, basically represent the order conditions for the Kuda methods. Um, but as it turns out, it's in this paper from 1857, it's like by Arthur Cayley, it's like who first introduced it's like term trees. Um, this was actually developed uh, precisely to uh, deal with, uh, in a combinatorial way, um, the combinatorics you get, it's like when you have differential operators acting on functions. Uh, so so it, it really is, as it turns out in retrospect, not so surprising uh, that there's this uh, beautiful connection between uh, trees and order conditions for RK methods. Okay, and this uh, sort of, this idea of trees were developed introduced uh, by Archie Cayley in uh, 1857 in this paper entitled Theory. Analytical forms. All trees. Okay, and as it turns out, it's like uh, they were developed or they were introduced uh, to really sort of uh, give you an innovative way of dealing with um, differential operators acting on functions. Right, so they were used uh, to deal. Tarks, if you will, of sort of differential operators. Acting on functions. So let me try to uh, illustrate it's like how that works. It's like uh, in the case of um, differential equations. Um, which are autonomous. So I'm going to restrict the case of uh, some of autonomous differential equations. Okay. And, and of course, uh, the theory, it's like uh, which, uh, sort of more general theoretical framework for this, it's like extends to uh, non-autonomous differential equations because um, if you recall it's like uh, just doing the um, the uh, error analysis um, when looking at autonomous differential equations only really works up to uh, sort of deferred order conditions okay uh, but nevertheless it simplifies the exposition it's like so for, for now uh, we'll restrict our case to scalar autonomous uh, differential equations okay? I should say scalar uh, and, and this is for uh, for Conceptual it's like simplicity, right? Like, uh, uh, pedagogical sort of simplicity. But hopefully, at least, it will illustrate to you it's like uh, some of the ideas uh, which go into using uh, this kind of combinatorial tool uh, to simplify the calculations uh, of the order conditions. All right, uh, so you probably know that, uh, you know, uh, we talked about this before. Uh, you start off with a scalar um, autonomous differential equation, y prime zero f of y. Uh, then one of the things it's like one does, it's like in the error analysis of the Kuda methods, is to compare some sort of Taylor approximation of the uh, the you know it's like the numerical method with a Taylor expansion of the exact solution. Uh, so what is involved uh, are um, essentially total derivatives. It's like of the um, defining equation. 
It's like uh, the defining differential equation. So uh, if you're just in the uh, autonomous case, then what happens is that uh, you know the time derivative of operator dt is just equal to uh, let me just write it this way is equal to um, df lambda dy dt times uh, partial respect to y right which I write as f of y uh, d dy okay uh, so let's uh, just recall it's like the first few terms it's like a show up it's like then uh, when you take higher derivatives, it's like a solution, right? So one double prime, uh, and of course you use this like, to construct the Taylor approximation of the flow map. So y double prime is of course ddt of uh, y prime, which is uh, f uh, d dy. So I'm going to uh, suppress the dependence on y here, okay? Acting on f, right? So this is uh, f. Uh, one, right? So that's the first term. Okay, uh, and then uh, the next term is y triple prime is equal to d d t of uh, y double prime. This way, okay, and triple prime, which is uh, f d d y acting. And then what happens here is that now we have to, to deal with this kind of uh, product rule thing. Okay, so if I uh, differentiate, if I apply the differential operator to the first term, I get f uh, f y and then multiply by f y. Right? And then I apply the differential operator to the second term, I get uh, f squared y y. Okay, uh, and we can of course do this one more time. Okay. So the fourth derivative of this is uh, I just write this the following way, right? So this is just f uh, d dy acting on f uh, f y squared, right? Plus uh, I just leave it in product form f y. Plus uh, f f f y y. Okay. Um, so this is equal to. So this is equal to, again, you apply the product rule, right? You get f applied to, uh, so you take a partial respect to the first term, right? You get f, uh, f y cubed, okay? And then you can apply it to the second term, right? So that's uh, f squared and then d dy of f y, okay? So that's uh, 2. Okay, uh, and then uh, you can do the same. F, okay, d dy applied to f squared term, you get f uh, to f y term. Then uh, you apply the operator to the second piece now. You get f cubed uh, f y of y. Okay, so I can collect all these pieces. Uh, so that's uh, f y y y f cubed plus four times f y y um, f y f squared plus um, this term here of 
front, which is uh, f y cubed uh, f. Okay, um, so so now it's like I'm going to um, try to introduce uh, a little bit of notation, and we'll see it's like uh, how um, you can then think of these operators as as uh, uh, well. Let me rephrase that. Then you can think of applying the total time derivative operator. Pardon me. Uh, in a way which has a very nice interpretation uh, in terms of an operation on, um, on sort of the tree representation. Okay, so let me sort of give you a few examples of uh, what I call rooted trees. Okay, and, uh, and, and um, I will first describe for you what they correspond to, uh, and then once you have that, um, we'll see how it's like uh, you know they fit in nicely. It's like for this one. So if you just have one dot, okay, so that's the root, okay, uh, then this is uh, identified with f, okay. Then uh, you could, the next thing you could have it's like with two trees, uh, with one root uh, is something like this, okay, which is, uh, uh, and the labeling it's like which we will have is that you look at the number of um, sort of branches, if you will, it's like off the node. And uh, every time you have a branch, it's like you think of uh, f being differentiated once. So this node has one branch. So I think of this as being associated with f y. This node has no branches, so I associate it with f. So again, this is consistent with what we've labeled here. This is a single node with no branches above it. So it's f, okay? And then this is uh, f and f y. We'll think of this as being associated with uh, f f y, right? Um, so that's that's the only thing you can do. It's like in terms of sort of connected rooted trees with two nodes. Um, if you have three nodes, uh, then there's sort of two things you can do. You can do something like this, uh, and and the, the idea of rooted trees is that there's a distinguished uh, sort of uh, root, if you will, it's like a tree, and then everything is sort of uh, you know. Ordered, it's like with that, with that so here, if you look at these two nodes, it's like there are no branches. Okay, so they're each associated with f. Uh, this one has two branches, so you associate this with f y y. Uh, there's another possibility of a rooted tree uh, with uh, three nodes. Okay, so that's one, two, three nodes. Okay, so this is again a rooted tree, um, and this node, okay. Has one branch, so I label this f y. This node has, again has one branch, I label it y. This node has zero branches, I label it f. All right, so so now it's like we've looked at uh, rooted trees up to uh, three nodes, okay? And so this first one is just associated f. This is f f y or f y f, depending on what you want to call it. This is f squared f y y, and this is f uh, f y squared. Okay, so if you look at the terms which show up uh, in the Taylor expansion, right, having to do with derivatives of y, uh, you see that the very first term you have is y prime equal f, that's the very first term here. The y double prime term gives you an f, uh, fy, f, fy. Uh, the y triple prime term gives you a f, uh, fy squared, f, fy squared, and then f squared, fy, y f squared f y y okay so hopefully you see this uh, sort of trend right uh, this is one node it ends up corresponding to the first derivative of uh, y this has two nodes it corresponds to the second derivative of y these two have three nodes they correspond or they're included in the third derivative of y okay all right so that's an interesting observation okay so the next observation is that one has is well how do you go from yeah, something involving one node, something involving two nodes, to something involving three nodes. Okay, uh, and of course, what it involves is this idea of the differential operator f uh, times uh, d q y acting on something else. Okay, so um, so how do you do this? Okay, uh, and and in particular, it's like you you imagine that the thing it's um, acted upon will consist of terms which are themselves are trees. Okay, so so they're sort of like inductive assumption here okay what we sort of showed if you will it's like is that you know in the sort of 
first order case and second order case. In the third order case, these uh, trees, which are uh, going to turn out to be related to what are called elementary differentials, right? So these uh, sort of rooted trees right, are identified with what are called elementary differentials. So these things are called elementary differentials because, you know, if you look at this, you know, you have things involving f, it's like fy, fyy, and so on, right, and then in some various powers. Okay, so it turns out that not every single combination that's like of these derivatives uh, are, you know, it's like actually show up in the Taylor expansion, okay, uh, and the ones which do um, are uh, what are called the elementary differentials, and they are in essentially one-to-one -one correspondence, if you will, um, with, um, with these uh, rooted trees. Okay, so, so we know this is y double prime, right? So what do we have here? So what we really have, if you will, is that this thing is uh, essentially f d dy applied to um, this um, rooted tree, okay? So I'm going to think of this dot as just going to identify with f here. Okay, uh, and we know that's this thing here. So, all right, so what's happening now? Okay, so you have an f, and then you have a dy term. Okay, and this is acting on um, some tree. Okay, um, so what's happening, right? So what, what, what's happening? So, so the claim, of course, is that it's this thing. So you might ask, well, what happens when I append a branch, right, with a, uh, you know, which has sort of this branch which doesn't connect to anything else? Uh, so of course it's like this piece is associated with f, and then what I've done when I added this branch to the object below is that I've differentiated that with respect to y once, okay? So, so that's perfectly consistent. So this idea of uh, grafting, if you will, this branch, right, this kind of object to an, the existing object uh, exactly corresponds, it's like, to what you would expect via this identification we've had between trees and the elementary differentials. It really sort of encodes exactly the action of f d d y acting on that, uh, that branch, okay? So let's sort of go a step further and see well, what happens if you take the second derivative and, and what's really going on, okay? So uh, if you write this out, uh, I'm going to look at what, uh, well, I'm going to look at what f d dy does, okay, to this tree. Okay, so, um, so of course it's like this uh, sort of you know, two-noted tree is corresponding to f uh, Fy. So basically, each of these nodes, it's like it's one of these terms uh, in some sort of product. Okay. So when you apply the product rule, what you're basically saying is that well, I take this thing, I apply that differential operator to one of the pieces, okay, and then I leave the other piece the way it is, okay. And I do this uh, for each of the pieces. It's like uh, which is in the product. Okay. So here, uh, there's an F Fy term. There are two terms in the product. So uh, I will see what happens here, okay? So, so the bottom line, if you will, is that this idea of grafting, right? So you, what you want to do is you want to graft that single branch, right? So you want to graft uh, something like this uh, acting on, on some other node, right? So this is really what that operation is doing. I add this to uh, some node that's like in, um, in this tree. So there are two ways to do it because there are two um, nodes I can attach this branch to. Okay, so one way is to do this, right? And what that corresponds to, of course, is that I'm applying the differential operator to this thing, which corresponds to f, okay? Um, and when I apply the differential operator to the part involving f, I will get a f uh, df dy df dy term. Okay, and that's exactly what happens. This is an f, fy, fy. So when I, again, 
graft this branch to the top node corresponding to F and applying the differential operator to the top piece and then leaving the bottom piece the way it is. Okay, and then the other possibility is I graft to the root of the tree. Uh, and so what happens there is I get something like this. I've added an additional branch to, to this piece now. Um, and again, that corresponds to now differentiating this piece, right? So this piece is the Fy term. By adding a branch, I have a Fyy term. But this, uh, this sort of node inside in that branch doesn't connect to anything else, so I'm multiplying by that as well. So I differentiate that piece one time respect to y, and then I multiply by f, which is exactly again what this differential operator is doing. And again, you can convince yourself that this is f y f y f y y. Sorry, this is f f and f y y, right? Which is the second term uh, you see. It's like again the uh, total derivative of y. All right. So uh, as we've seen before, uh, that works. It's for for this simple case. So let's. Uh, see what happens it's like when we go further. So, so far I've only drawn uh, the root of trees, it's like up to uh, three nodes, uh, and it corresponds to the third derivative. Let's see whether this idea of grafting uh, works, it's like when I apply it to, to this piece now. Okay, all right, so I will just leave the uh, total derivative, uh, the third derivative of f, uh, or the, so the fourth derivative of y, the third derivative of f here, uh, just to see what happens, okay? So, um, so y uh, fourth derivative is the total time derivative of uh, the third piece here, right? Which is this uh, sort of three node uh, rooted tree uh, plus this other three node rooted tree. Okay, and then now again, we want to do this systematically. I want to graft to each of the nodes uh, in this piece, okay? Um, so, okay, so let's graph to the top. So that gives me something which looks like this. Okay, that's one possibility. I can graph to the middle. It gives me this. I can graph to the bottom. Okay, and, um, so there's a, there's a little bit of a convention, if you will. It's like that uh, you... Um, make the longest uh, sort of branch, it's like to the left, okay? But it doesn't really matter. Okay, so let me kind of do this. Uh, all right, so, so again, it's like I graph, this comes from grafting to the very top node. This piece comes from grafting in the middle. This piece comes from grafting uh, to the bottom, which is the root, okay? So this is f d dy applied to this term here, and of course this term here, is the f f y squared term, okay? Plus, so now I can do this to this second piece, which corresponds to the f squared f y y term, okay? So again, I can graph it's like to the left, right? This left uh, leaf, the right leaf, okay? And, and, and it doesn't really matter, they're the same, so I have two times uh, you know, this piece here, and then the other possibility is I graph to the root, right, which is um, <coughs> okay, which looks like uh, you know, this piece here. Okay. All right. So so these two are clearly the same. So let's see what this is, right? This is f. Fy, Fy, Fy. Okay, this piece is uh, F. There's an F. It's an Fy y term, and then there is a Fy term here. Okay, so this term here is uh, an F. This is an F. This is an Fy, and there's an Fy y term here. So it, it turns out then that. Uh, there is, uh, so these two, it's like end up being related to the same elementary differential, okay? Um, okay, okay. But, uh, nevertheless, it's, uh, you, can, you can work through this. 
All right, uh, and then this piece here is uh, f, 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 y, y, y. Okay, so when all said and done, right, the sphinx ends up uh, becoming um, sort of f, f, y cubed plus uh, four times uh, f, y, right. Y f squared plus uh, f y y y f cubed, which is exactly uh, the expansion which we had made. Okay, so so again, it's like this is sort of telling you that uh, these kind of rooted trees give you a very nice systematic way of uh, enumerating it's like uh, these uh, objects which show up in the uh, Taylor expansion. Okay. All right. Um, so again, we're, we're still, you know, we're still not quite there yet. This, this sort of then uh, one piece of the puzzle again is sort of writing down in a combinatorial way. It's like the Taylor expansion for the exact solution. Um, but of course, it's like with the Uniputa method, you have to combine it's like these Taylor expansions for each of the, uh, you know, stages, and then combine all of this. It's like to determine the sort of Taylor expansion for the numerical method. Um, so, um, so you can ask, well, how do you go about uh, doing this? Okay. All right. Okay, um, so in order to do to write down the order condition for a Runa-Kutta method, right, you have to um, you have to do the following, which is that um, you have to introduce this idea of the order um, of a rooted tree. So this there's some sort of combinatorics that like one has to take into account, uh, which has to do with uh, you know, counting the number of ways you arrive at, at a particular uh, rooted tree or a rooted tree differential. So, uh, so let's try to illustrate this by example, right? So let's consider the following uh, rooted tree. Okay. All right. So there's uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, nodes here. So I'm just going to put a five here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to essentially erase the root. Okay. So I'm just left with this. And then I'm going to uh, sort of represent the omitted root by um, like a sort of empty node here. And then maybe I can uh, color code its uh, branches still here. It's like uh, in red. Maybe I'll just do the whole thing in red. Okay. So it's, uh, so it's just reminding me of what the structure is coming from. And now it's no longer there. Okay. And then now it's like I count each of the disjoint uh, subtrees, okay, uh, and then introduce that as, as a factor. Okay, so there's a two here, that's one, that's one, okay. Then again, I do the same thing. It's like I think of each of these things as rooted trees, and I uh, delete the root, okay. So now the only thing which is left, so that's gone, that's gone, that's gone. This was already gone in the previous step, okay. So the only thing which is left, right, is uh, this piece here at the top. Uh, and of course, that only has one term, so there's one term here. And all right, so, um, so there's a sort of a systematic way, if you will, of deflating. It's like uh, the rooted tree. It's like by deleting, it's like uh, the root, and then uh, sort of counting, it's like what's left over, OK? So uh, I guess one way to think about this is that this is a, a way to uh, count the number of ways there are of arriving at the same tree. It's like by this sort of branching type technique, right? So, so there's a, this is a way to sort of compute some multiplicity, if you will. Okay. Um, so if you think of this uh, thing as t hat, right? So this is t hat, then uh, gamma of t hat is going to be 5, this term, times 
now 2 times 1 times 1 times this last piece here times 1. Okay, so that's of course just 10. Okay, so this is uh, sort of how you go about computing the order of the root of 3. Um, and then the last piece of the puzzle, of course, is that you know I'm, I'm claiming I'm going to derive for you a order condition for a Runge Kutta method. And the Runge Kutta method, method, of course, it depends on these AIJs and the BIs. And you know, in the order conditions which we saw before, they involve some combination of the AIJs and the BIs. Uh, and then you want to match this, for example, with the coefficients it's like of the elementary differentials in the Taylor expansion of the uh, exact flow method, right? Um, so, so how do you go about doing this? Okay, so, so let's look at a, a simple example now again. So let's look at the following uh, root of tree. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label each of these things, um, each of the nodes uh, with some index. Uh, so let's call this I, this is J, this is K, and this is L. So there's uh, some indexing here, and then of course it's like uh, you know there's still these connections. Okay. So um, and and the claim, if you will, is that you're going to use the uh, AIJ and the BI coefficients uh, to associate with this particular thing here. Um, so for the order condition associated with this particular root tree, which if you recall is related to these elementary differentials. Uh, and when we were doing the order condition for the Kuda methods, we basically compared the coefficients for all of these things which show up, like f, 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 y, you know, it's like uh, f, f, y squared, and so on, right? So, so each of these things, it's like uh, are identified with root of tree. It's like we want to figure out, you know, the coefficients coming from the root Kuda method have to match the coefficients coming from the Taylor expansion. Okay, so you have this, okay, and then the Coefficient uh, turns out to be related in the following way. You have a sum uh, over, um, well, L, right? J, I, and K. So over all of the indices, um, from I equals to 1, uh, from whatever all of these indices are from 1 to S. Uh, and then what happens is you know, how are these are expressed in terms of the AIJs and the BIs, right? So, uh, if you have, it's like the root, the root is related to B, and then you index it by L, which is the label you assign to that root, okay? And then the AI J terms, it's like are related to all of the um, sort of the links between nodes, okay? So here I have one link, I write this as A, uh, L, K. I have one node here, right? between L and J, so I have A, L, and J. So the ordering, if you will, has to do with uh, the first term is the lower um, label, and the second term is the upper label, right? So this is corresponding to an A, J, I term. So it's like A, J, I, okay? So again, uh, let me sort of recap that. There's a B, L term because L is the label associated with the root, and the root has the B index, and, well, the, the sort of B coefficients, and then all the other links, it's like I involved with the coefficients of the A matrix, uh, where I look at the lower index and then the upper index. So there's an LK here, there's an LK, there's an LJ here, there's an LJ, there's a JI term, there's a JI. Okay, so there's this sum over, you know, it's like the um, entries of the Rukuda matrix uh, and this uh, sort of the Rukuda weights, if you will. Uh, and then what is this equal to? So this is going to have to equal to 1 over gamma of the, the tree in question, okay? So, uh, so now t hat is this, okay? All right, so, uh, so now is a good time to compute the the order of this tree, okay? Let's just sort of try to you know, figure out how this is done. All right, so there's one, two, three, four. Okay, so this first stage is like this four. And then if you recall, it's like what you do is you uh, get rid of the root, 
leave the rest of it. And then you count it's like the um, you know the size of the um, so the disjoint or disconnected um, rooted trees. So this is two times one, right? And then now again it's like you delete the roots of each of the subtrees, okay, or well, each of the disjoint trees. Uh, so this is empty, this is empty, this is empty, and then okay, this is connected to there's one piece here, and so there's only one here. So the order of this tree is 4 times 2 times 1 times 1. So uh, this thing is equal to 8. Okay? So we want 1 over gamma, it's like, which is 1 of the order, it's like of this. So um, this is 1 over 8. Okay, so this is an example of how you compute the sort of order condition so associated with a particular root tree. Uh, and as we saw before, um, you know, it's like the um, the number of nodes in the tree, it's like it turn out to be related to uh, how many derivatives you've taken of uh, the function. Um, it's, you know, it's like of, uh, of, for, of y, right? So uh, as you expect, it's like uh, you, you just have to sort of systematically enumerate. It's like all the rooted trees, it's like um, with the, um, you know, with that number of nodes or with that kind of cardinality, um, you know, and again, it's like you, you do this in such a way that uh, you respect this kind of ordering property. It's like where uh, the longest uh, sort of branch, if you will, is always uh, kept to the left or right. And like there's some sort of uh, way to, um, you know, deal with multiplicities, if you will. Okay, all right. So in any case, it's like this. This uh, this is an example of how you can use this uh, nice uh, combinatorial tool of expressing uh, the terms in the Taylor series um, of both the exact flow and the Runge-Kudde method uh, in terms of this uh, you know, representation in terms of uh, rooted trees. And as I sort of said at the very start of the lecture, this is perhaps not so surprising in retrospect uh, because you know, Galey introduced the idea of trees. It's like uh, to represent, again, these kind of actions of differential operators on functions. And, and so, again, it's not so surprising that uh, it uh, finds utility, it's like in uh, the error analysis of our k methods. So let me just stop here.